Lady and gentlemen, boys and girl, welcome back to the Brennan Dorman MMA channel. Thank you for tuning in. This week's episode will be on the Lion Killer, Gary Tonin, fellow Henzo Gracie Academy fam, and John Danaher student. Um, his MMA growth has been absolutely um, ridiculous and exponential, especially on his feet. We all know his grappling skills, etc. So let's get going with it. So, nice exchange to start. Tonin kind of lightened his feet. Level change into an overhand right. There's an attempted counter left by Lee here, who's, you know, a pretty heavy handed guy. And he's also a world champion grappler. I think he's got one to Tonin, say, seven. But there you see that overhand right. Um, he's, he's loving the feint shot into the overhand right. Stand switching a lot and doing some really long and rangy twos off of it. Um, the thing is, with the stand switch, and the preemptive head movement, he, he's constantly kind of loading his hips and or thighs, which are, are very strong, as you can just see by looking. Um, it's also going to set up the potential for a takedown. So the, the threat of the takedown always is going to set up the, the strikes and or takedowns off the strikes. So it's kind of this damned if you do, damned if you don't scenario. So here's the overhand right, less set up, but it's still a little bit telegraphed here. See, easily out of the way. He keeps trying that left kind of like check hook, but not with a pivot. Um, single shots aren't usually my favorite thing, unless they're like jabs or really fast or feints. But no, or let's say a no self cross. See, there he went for just a kind of he pumped the jab up top and then went for one to the body. That's a, that's a bit of a dangerous strike. Not a, not a huge fan of that. That's one thing I'd like to see him abandon. But he's forcing the punch. It's time to to switch up on that because he almost just got put to sleep right there. So how about a perfectly executed Hendo takedown, eh? The overhand right drags the coinciding hip with it. That's the penetration step, essentially. It's, it's named after Den Henderson. It's a level change into the wrap-up, into reap. This along with the striking, it's kind of what, what makes it, his submission game and everything else kind of tie in so nicely together. See him, see him use his head as a battering ram right there. And of course, the opponent uses, he's trying to use double overhooks into a butterfly guard to prevent a pass and create a stand up. And Tone seems to kind of allow him to here. See with that dead arm that he went straight with. So a beautiful underhook counter with a collar tied to drive to the fence, clinch, and then go into a clinch knee, like from a plumb. So he's got, he's got the collar tie there and the overhook on the right hand side. And what he'll do is release the tie plumb and then explode after he moves a, a hair backward into a flying knee. Very creative and very effective right there. Bang. Beautiful. See? There's a drop pivot. Boom. With his right leg. And he didn't really like leap high in the air. You don't need to. He just needs to reach the chin. So afterwards, this jaw shake is pretty telling. No rest for the wicked. Especially if you're from Jersey, right? I don't think anyone will get that joke, but that's okay. Nice, nice little front kick there. AKA teep for all you Thai purists. So better body jab set up on this, this go round rather than the last one, which I kind of picked on. See, level change first, fainted, and then went down, step back afterwards, a little retraction. This nice sequence is three long hooks, and one of which he kind of faints to set up a six or a rear hand uppercut. So there's one, there's two, now look at this one, faint. Ooh, looks for that long uppercut, but he was, he was kind of hip to it. Here's a nice little hasty pursuit with some refinement versus like a moving target. This is precisely where I see so much potential with him. It's explosive distance deception. Uh, on top of many other things, but as far as the natural talent is concerned, this is this is very encouraging, and that's accurate. And the form is correct and and nice level change again. I'm trying to shoot that uppercut off that kind of Khabib style. I'll bring him up every breakdown if I feel like it. So here's a beautiful fade lead five, and because it's from Southpaw, it's very similar to the corkscrew punch that Prince Nassim Ahmed or Connor would throw. It's, it, you, you fade right to kind of throw through the guard. It's a, a bit of a guard splitter, usually followed by a left-handed cross. Uh, Connor did it a lot against Holloway. There it is. Um, he, he doesn't leap as much. Here's some of his, like, what I would call, like, ADHD footwork, which I have ADHD. I'm not, surely not knocking Gary, because I think he does as well, if I remember correctly. And some, some more beautiful stance switching. Quick set left hands, which are really impressive for someone that's usually from the right hand stance. Two low, one high. This is very nice. And here we've got more of the drop step teeps. And there's always the weapons thing. It's like, I, in my opinion, weapons more is more. The whole Bruce Lee, I'd rather fight a guy that's done the kick uh, 10,000 times than 10,000 kicks. Well, I'll take a guy that knows, you know, five kicks and does them 2,000 times a piece. 
That's just me, I suppose. The simple reason being that those kicks can set up punches, a la GSP. This is a Superman punch-ish faint right hip. Watch this. It comes up and then the little short right hook afterwards. And now, of course, right after the drop step body, Teep is fainted to propel the leaping right hook from southpaw. This, cre this kind of creativity is just astounding for a guy in his third fight. Here to slow down. See that? It's at short range. He brings his hands back, too. There's another long left cross from shuffled feet. It's another near hit, as uh, George Collin would say. Beautiful left straight. See, see how his form on some of these that I slowed down is? It's perfect. Now, if his striking is an ambidextrous, it, it certainly will be. Um, this southpaw to orthodox switch to lead hand sliding hook, it's, it's slick, and eventually it'll be accurate. I'm, if I see any flaws in his striking right now, it's that. It's, it's the accuracy. So here's a Pat Berry, sort of Dillashaw, Dan Hooker friendly idea. So one fakes the distance too from southpaw and uses the momentum to then throw a high 10. You drag your hip along with the strike, kind of like you would the Dan Henderson takedown. It's, it's similar in, in principle and in, in uh, momentum. And once again, this drop step teep, this time from Southpaw. I swear sometimes he works with Filmers, although I've heard nothing in that regard, but there's just so much of this that I recognize. More preemptive head movement as well, and be just beautiful movement, really. And those start to sting. That's a wonderfully, um, that's a wonderfully timed uh, kick to the body, followed by a wonderfully timed leg kick. And this is one of those variant strikes that I'm okay with single shotting. He tried for a head kick there and missed on the 10. But a beautiful shuffle, and, and he kept his eyes high, had the opponent thinking middle 10 to catch and counter, and said it's kind of like that knee buckle um, because he was so heavy on it. See how it goes to catch there? Now when you do, you, you tend to bend at the knee there and put all your weight on your front leg. But the 10 missed either way. Right back at the same time, leg inside. Uses the left, so here we go. Boom, lead leg, and puts his hands nice and high and retracts. Here's some more drop stepping and switch dancing. This time it's a jab followed by another one of those corkscrews. Here he is, head in, head out. Bang. Perfect. Again, notice form. It's important. There he goes for the corkscrew. Now he doesn't fade off like the others, but still wonderful. He has a beautiful jab into a rear uppercutter 1-6. Tremendous fulcrum sweep afterwards. Kind of shades of Frankie Edgar here. Um, see that? He's shuffling his feet. Square hip. Boom. Comes in. Now the guy kind of bladed his hip, so he couldn't get that completely executed, but... Nevertheless, it's a nice scramble out, however. Sung Jung Lee is an excellent grappler, as I mentioned prior. Um, scrambles right back up, goes for a double leg. I don't know what he was really thinking there, as if something was going to happen. It wasn't. This isn't an ideal situation, as someone with a guard and ever-improving footwork like Tone is, is really dangerously cerebral in a kind of caution to the wind sort of way. Um, and I use the word cerebral intentionally because it's not as though he's a dummy. He's a super intelligent guy. Look at that, another leaping knee into a tie plum, um, knees nice and tight, another nice, nicely timed leg kick, and those are going to add up. Good example of circular footwork, this is sort of his um, ode to Ali, if you will, circling, popping his jab. Um, I'm sh I wonder if uh, he had done this in the UFC, if he would have got as much shit as someone else did for it. Um, there he goes for the two to the body. He's got to be careful with really high level strikers with that. This is what I learned as a rag kick. It's kind of a wonder boy. You saw GSP do it against Bisping, but you chamber up a round kick to then kind of get stagnant and go side with it. But he went nice and high with his toes there, catching him on the chin. That's beautiful work. Um, and here you're just seeing one fighter slow down and the other one's starting to put on like an athletic clinic. He's evading, he's controlling distance, he's countering, he's hitting without without getting hit really or taking significant damage anyway. And it's 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 starting to become one size. See how he kind of flopped to the fence there. I mean that that's that's noteworthy. Beautiful jab into an uppercut once again. And there's the kind of preemptive head movement, quick set, and he's just constantly moving and then exploding. I talked about that on the podcast right there when he kind of drop stepped into southpaw and then leapt into to that beautiful and he'll finish out the wrong the round uh, strong here a little jab beautiful movement off the jab he did a nice little two to the body so beautiful start the next round as GT kind of goes with the jab hook fade this one's an, a better example of like a check hook where he kind of fades to his own left off of it so pop jab here he comes and then he's gonna fade off that way the other person's three won't hit so the snake charming movement and cadence in an outburst are seemingly putting Lee in like def defense only and honestly like I can't say I blame him even though the the real threat hasn't begun um here he is in and out but everything see look at look at gary's movement i mean this is his third fight it's absurd okay, one at 145 with his strength his wrestling his submissions were he's dangerous it's crazy to say otherwise so 
this is in shades of TJ Dillish, but I really don't know what it is. Windmill taunt, the head kick, constant center line breaks, etc., etc., etc. No X in that word. Nice head kick off the uh, windmill. It's a beautiful 10 from the rear, followed by two more. Alternating teeps to the gut, and we know they add up quick. Um, Connor fans will remind you about it every time you bring up the Mendez fight for sure. No offense. And here he's a little square hip to draw him in, and the leg kick when he bites. It's a really a, it's a wonderful array of strikes that he's showing in this fight. And those are again they add up and to go right and then left like that outside inside. Identical look here, same idea. Alternating stance. This one hurt, and you can tell kind of by the reaction when it slowed down. Look at that bang. That's the left one, and that kind of caught with the foot more than the shin. Something else to keep in mind is that without the fear of a takedown, Tony can kind of afford to throw kicks with reckless abandon, only these are kind of far from that. Note the steps forward post kick and the back pivots for reset when he wants to, you know, throw something else, whether it be punch or kick. This wonderful jab sequence and level changes in order to keep him kind of making takedown reads, and then the post strike pulling and evasion are, are really on point as well, uh, noteworthy. Again, I, I kept trying to show you the perfect form. It's always going to the body a little more intelligently or a little more cerebral there. There are, they're just, if you really were to ask strikers, coaches, um, you know, if this this accelerated pace of learning and movement was was regular by any stretch, I, I think you'd be hard pressed to find one that said that it was. Um, he he's he's learning on the job quickly. Um, circular jabs like Ali, very impressive stuff there. So now the level change, fainting is kind of paying off. Um, here he's freezing them, and as he's moving, there it is, outlet, and there it is right under he was waiting for that right so it's impossible to know but at this but at some point gt made a read on the big swing capitalized again it's it's a butterfly guard pull from the opponent here lee and this time tone's going to treat a little different um he's going to decide to posture and and threaten the, like a knee slide pass as he's up in like pyramid position as you see he'll posture up here and he was looking for a hip and he's playing with his knees instead he sets the trap by allowing space to be created while maintaining the overhook with a front face lock so from here see he snatches that and he puts a, a cup around the chin and he keeps that overhook on with his left hand it's kind of like a front face lock in a, in a whizzer baited sweep in order to switch grips and set his legs for the high elbow guillotines we bought the marcellotine here so watch this he, there it is now he goes to turn over and as he's doing that see the feet here in the hand those are those are the noteworthy things i wanted you to see so he's going to switch that off and over so that way he can go high elbow and the right foot is through kind of like a broomstick would be uh, good defense to roll over and prevent non-choking high elbow to constrict Tonin kind of sprawls out and maintains that chin, chin cup throughout this entire sequence though. Um, see as he's going, the guy's feeling it for sure there and I'm sure that took quite a bit out. He's reaching out of that single, but instead of sprawling that leg, does this modified kind of scissor sweep into a mount. Again, this one's defended incredibly. Um, this guy's a world champion in jiu-jitsu, so it's not as though he doesn't have any defense. I mean, that'd, that'd be silly. So here, even from north-south, he's going to maintain that chin cup the entire time. One of the things you'll learn as you get better at, at key 18s and i don't know all of your levels but um the ability to cup the chin in, pretty much from all positions if you're trying to go high elbow because it's one of my favorites as well um the underhook gives the illusion of safety but there really isn't and the hands reclasp recla and the elbow goes right over the trapezius muscle and that is a wrap every time son from neon belly steps up nothing but class here and uh, I'm, I'm proud of my dude gary tone and i remember him being a purple belt um, that that long ago I go back with them and this is just a another angle of, of everything where you can see from north south now I don't know what he was doing there maybe touching at his nose because he got a clip look at that beautiful timing on the underhook there wonderful stuff and he uses that to kind of pull that that pendulum or momentum sweep there oh hi yeah, they're doing well there Tone in all class, and I think he's going to be a monster at 145. By all means, leave in the comment section what you think. Um, I'd be interested to hear from you all. And uh, I thank you all for watching. Um, this was uh, this was a lot of fun to, to make, and it's really fun to watch the uh, evolution of someone like Gary Tone and as he's coming up the ranks. To you, John. Right shoulder. Once I get my grips, I turn my right shoulder in so that we're side on. I connect my hands, my elbow comes back, watch my head go from Bernardo's right shoulder across to the left shoulder. It's that.
that movement of the hip that gives me the high elbow position. Now I take my support leg and I hook tight in here with my right foot. My second leg goes high up and touches my own elbow and my leg passes across. Now when Banana goes to the inside, the strangle hold is exceptionally tight. Okay.